As those of you who were at Heraklion Air Station know, in ops, you had to punch in a four-digit code to buzz open the door to the flight area. The hallway you walked into at that point led past the small room on the right where reports were dropped off for the comms center. At the end of this hall were three adjoining desks on the right. I was assigned to the middle one. It was understood that as a two-tier, I would supervise this section, initially as an airman first class, then as a staff sergeant when I got my E-5 stripe in a few months. About ten feet away from my desk was an area called Swamp. The 202 working there was Don Oaks. He was a tall, skinny boy from Alabama and had that southern accent that I have always found to be amusing. We quickly became good friends. Don had arrived on the island about six months before me. As far as I was concerned, he was the expert on what to do and how and where to do it. On our first trip into Heraklion together, after I carefully navigated that winding mountain road in my Jeep, I was pleasantly surprised to find that automobile traffic in the city wasn't a problem after all. Even in the daytime, there were relatively few vehicles around, some taxis and buses and motorcycles, but there were surprisingly few cars and trucks for a city that size. Driving on Iraklan's narrow streets never became much of an issue. Don introduced me to three things, each of which would become part of my time on the island. The memorable Greek wine called Minos, Caprice Restaurant, and the waterfront where tourists arrived via luxury cruise ships or commuter ferries. Having the Jeep made trips into Heraklion easy. We mostly did the same things and went to the same places each time we were in town. And that was almost every day we weren't working swings, although even then there were some midnight runs for a quick souffle if we could get there before they closed at midnight. The first thing we always did when we got into town was to swing by the waterfront to see if any tourist ships were in port. After that, we would either hit the Bamboo Club or Chi-Chi's for a drink or two and to see if any touristas were there. And then, of course, Caprice Restaurant was almost a mandatory stop. Caprice was kind of a focal point in Iraklan. Everyone knew it was located at Lions Square and all GIs ultimately ended up eating and drinking there. It was a very popular spot, partially because it was easily accessible to tourists walking up the street from the waterfront. Adjacent to the outside tables of Caprice was the Morosini Fountain. Lion Square was a very convenient turning around point for the Jeep. I used to like barreling up the street from the waterfront as fast as that old jeep could go, then swinging around the fountain, barely slowing down. If we saw guys at Caprice that we knew from base, I drove as close to them as possible so Don could grab a bottle of wine off their table. The Iraklian police never seemed to mind when we did this. The air police, on the other hand, had no sense of humor especially if it was their wine we grabbed. Occasionally they blew their whistles at us, but I never slowed down to see what they wanted. Another place I liked in Iraklan was the Glass House, although officially it was off-limits. The Glass House was thought to be owned or managed by members of the Greek Communist Party. Accordingly, as intelligence GIs, we weren't allowed to be around them, 
so we were banned from the establishment. But I did like it there. During my visits, I learned to break plates and glasses when I was enjoying myself. That was the traditional method by which Greeks showed appreciation and enjoyment for a talent act. I remember one night in particular at the glass house when I saw a Greek man dancing alone lean over and pick up a table with his teeth. He held it in his teeth while he danced without the bottle of wine or glasses falling off. Sometimes, though, to break the monotony, we explored new areas of town and checked out tavernas we had never been to before. Also, there were small villages close to Iraklan where it was fun drinking with the locals. In these tavernas, the Greeks always insisted on us joining them at their table and buying us ouzo. They rarely, if ever, spoke English, and my Greek was certainly limited. However, these evenings in village tavernas not only showed me the generosity of the Greeks, but they helped me to become fairly good at sign language. <laughs>